chapter 35. Now, chapter 35, we will be seeing the loyalty of the Rechabites. Have you heard of the Rechabites? One Saturday, quite a few months ago, Elder Berlin preached on the Rechabites. Danny, did anyone remember? Now, I didn't ask, were you there? Because some people are there but don't remember. <laughs> but do you remember? Okay. Now, who are the Rechabites? They are a nomadic tribe. They are from, I mean, the the the, the Kenites, Kenites, K E N I T E S. Now, in the years past in history, they they are they have their forefather Jonadab, and Jonadab made a vow, made a vow. Two, in fact, two. Number one. They will describe the Rechabites. They will never touch any alcohol. Number one. Secondly, they will not dwell in any place. They will be nomads. They will move from a, I mean, place to place. They do not want to be rooted to the world. You follow me? It's like if you stay in one place, is you are anchoring and rooted to the world. But spiritually, they don't want to be attached to the world. And they don't want to take any alcohol beverage. If you look at 2 Chronicles chapter... No, uh, 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 50, 15. 2 Kings. Chapter 10, verse 15. At that point in time, the king, the king in power was King Jehu. King Jehu. 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 15. Now when he, this is King Jehu, when King Jehu departed from there, he met Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him, and he greeted him, and said to him, Is your heart right, as my heart is toward your heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is. So King Jehu said, If it is, give me your hand. So he gave him his hand, and he took him up, took him up to him into the chariot. To be received into the chariot of the king. You are in good books of the king. You understand? So, he had always, this, this tribe, Re Rahab, Rechabites, uh, they had always been friendly. They only have their own uh, 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 thing about alcohol and about being nomadic. But they have always been friendly towards Israel. No, nothing. They are not enemies of Israel. So, here we see here we see the Rechabites. Now, as I mentioned, they were nomads, right? So, nomads, they were actually outside the city. They were outside the city. But the Babylonians are coming. And the Babylonians got to walk from the outside into the city. But where are the Rechabites? They are outside. If they stay out there, who will come and bother them the Babylonians right so the safer place is to go into Jerusalem go into the city that's why as we read chapter 35 they are now in Jerusalem you understand okay. they were all outside okay they're all outside Jerusalem Okay, this is uh, Egypt, Miss uh, Jerusalem. So 
the Mecca vibes, the Nareka vibes are all outside, just not in the city. But now because of the threat of the Babylonians coming, they had to go somewhere for refuge, so they went into Jerusalem. And so as they went into Jerusalem, they were tested. They were tested. And let's see what was the test and whether they passed or failed the test. But God has a, a lesson for us and also more importantly for the people of Jerusalem, of Judah. <coughs> So the first five verses, a message to the Rechabites. Rechabites. The response on the Rechabites, verse 6 to 12. A rebuke from the Lord to Judah and Jerusalem. And then finally, God commanded the Rechabites. Say, you are good. You are very good. So verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Eh? I thought we already we have been looking at uh, Zedekiah, right? How come suddenly pop up this Jehoiakim? You look at this, huh? this line. So, after Josiah, you had Joy Akin. <coughs> then, Akin, not so keen. Didn't do a good job. Okay. So, replaced Achin. by Achin or Kunaya. Right? Again, didn't do, God also upset with him. So, next was Zedekiah who took over. So, in that sequence, that's how it should be. But, now we jump back to the reign of Jehoi Akin. So you know, this book is not written in chronological order. But the events are recorded as they are for our learning. So, just jump back a few years, quite a few years. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoi Akin, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, say, Go to the house of the Rechabites, speak to them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Whose idea was this? God, right? Hey, did God forget that the Rechabites had already made a vow that they are not supposed to drink alcohol? He get God forget? No. But God wanted them to be put through a test. Yeah, for them to pass. But it is also a lesson for the people of Judah. So, bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers. The, for, usually they use it for storage and so on. And give them wine to drink. That is like hospitality. Yeah. Then I took Zaniah, the son of Jeremiah. Now, this is not the prophet Jeremiah. This is another. The son of Habaziniah, his brothers and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. And I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Igla, liar, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, above the chamber of Masiah, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the door. Now, the keeper of the door is one who jaga the entrance. Huh? Yeah, like today, every Sunday you stand up there, you have greeters, you know. Greeters. But their job is not just to guard the entrance, but also to uh, collect taxes. Because to go into the temple of the Lord, you need to pay half a shekel. So, so 
bring all these people into the chamber. Verse 5, Then I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites bowls full of wine and cups. And I said to them, Drink wine. Drink wine. Oh, so thirsty. Should jump into it. This is fermented grape juice, right? But what did they say? Verse 6. But they said, this is now the response. The first part, it's the, what was it? A message to the Rechabites. The second part, verse 6 to 12, the response of the Rechabites. But they said, we will drink no wine. For Jonadab, which is the short for Jehonadab, which we read in 2 Kings chapter 10. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, You shall drink no wine, you or your sons, forever. You shall not build a house, nor sow seed, plant a vineyard, nor have any of this. But all your days you shall dwell in tents, that you may live many days in the land where you are so journeys. We shall drink no wine. And this was a voluntary commitment. Okay? It wasn't written in the law. So, all the Jews did not observe this. But it was voluntarily done. Committed by Jonah that and we know nobody force you to make a vow nobody force him to make a vow but if you make a vow keep it and God honors it and they said no and, and it has been like two three hundred years two to three hundred years that they have kept this Jonadab is was like two three hundred years ago until now they have been keeping it <coughs> so no wine no alcohol and then secondly, they are not to be rooted to the world. So don't build, don't sow, don't plant. That all the days you shall dwell in tents. That you may live many days in the land where you are so generous. So they remain nomads in the desert. Now, we are also so generous in this world. We are in the world but we are not of the world we are only passing through we are sojourners but God get, took this vow of them and reminded the people of Judah of this people and because their father Jonadab said so the whole <coughs> generations the sons and sons thereafter, they obey. And how many times did Jonadab say that? Once. Jonadab only need to issue the commandment once. And then the generations following until here, they obey. You know why God is bringing this up? Why? Because God, their father, father of the nation of Israel of Judah had said so many times to the children of Israel obey and you will live disobey you will die no idolatry you understand all the things I told you I said so many times and I sent so many prophets they rise early and then they come and tell you consistently persistently but you rejected them Look at these people. Their father, earthly father, only told them once and they obeyed. I'm your heavenly father. I told you so many times and you go up and you don't listen. You understand? This is the lesson of chapter 35. Okay? And we can go for tea break. <laughs> okay, we continue. <clears throat> Bye.
I, I think giving you the context is easier for you to follow. Okay, verse 8. Thus, this is still the Rechabites speaking. Thus, we have obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, our earthly father. In all that he charged us to drink no wine all our days, we, our wives, our sons, and our daughters, nor to build ourselves houses to dwell in, nor do we have vineyard, field, or seed. But we have dwelt in tents and have obeyed and done according to all that Jonadab, our father, commanded us. But it came to us, it came to pass. Now he's giving the reason why we are in the city. Normally we won't be in the city. But it came to pass when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up into the land that we said, Come, let us go to Jerusalem. And so when you go to Jerusalem, you have to go up, right? So come, let us go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, and for fear of the army of the Syrians. So we dwell at Jerusalem. So we are just refugees, temporary. And once the threat is over, we will move on. Because they are just city dwellers out of necessity, not of choice. And that's what they are. And God, God liked them. God loved them for their obedience. Verse 12. Then came the word of the Lord to Jeremiah, saying, Now it is what? Scolding time. Rebuke. A rebuke from the Lord unto the people of Judah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will you not receive instruction to obey my words? Says the Lord. The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, which he commanded his sons, not to drink wine, are performed. For to this day they drink none and obey their father's commandment. But, but, although I are your God, I your heavenly father, but although I have spoken to you, rising early and speaking, you did not obey me. And so can you see the disappointment in God? His heart that is being broken. I have spoken to you. Rising early and speaking means consistently, persistently. Yet you did not obey. <clears throat> I have also sent to you all my servants, the prophets. Rising up early and sending them, saying, Turn now everyone from his evil way, amend your doings, and do not go after other gods to serve them. Then you will dwell in the land which I have given you and your fathers. But you have not inclined your ear nor obeyed me. Surely the sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father which he commanded them. But this people has not obeyed me. <coughs> Verse 17, Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring on Judah and on all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the doom that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken to them, but they have not heard, and I have called to them, but they have not answered. And so what is waiting for them 
hereafter. Judgment. Only thing that remains for them now is judgment. They have not believed God. They have not obeyed God. They have not repented. And that is sad. But God has a good word for those who obey Him. And this, the last part, is the commendation of the Rechabites, the last two verses. And Jeremiah said to the house of the Rechabites, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Because you have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father, and kept all his precepts, and done according to all that he commanded you. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, <clears throat> the son of Rechab, shall not lack a man to stand before me forever. There shall not be lacking of a man from the tribe of Rechabite who will stand before God to what? To serve Him. There will always be a Rechabite who will be serving God forever. <clears throat> so there is commendation, there is reward for those who obey God. So, that's why Joshua said, choose you this day whom you want to serve. Choose. You, you have a choice to obey or disobey. So, that is chapter 35.